Now, our next guest today is the absolutely fabulous actress, activist, presenter and all-round national treasure. We're talking about Joanna Lumley yeah. and we couldn't be more thrilled that she's joining us this lunchtime. Joanna, welcome. Always great to see you. And we were just saying in the break how absolutely fabulous you mm -hmm. always look. How are oh. you looking so great in lockdown? Oh, my God. Well, look, first of all, I wanted to apologise for not looking as cool as all of you. I mean, Colleen in the garden, the rest of you in great kind of calm studio, and I've got clutter behind me. So forgive me not having a nice sort of sheet or some sort of bedspread so that it made it nice. um, And I also positioned my laptop right in front of the window. I was taught to do that. They said, you must get light on your face. Bruce does that. I do that. Yeah. yeah, I do that. That's a good trick. And don't put it, you're looking up your nose and don't do this and don't do that. So I'm in a lather of excitement to see you. I've got to say, you're all looking pretty darn gorgeous Well, we're all too. moaning, Joanna, about, you know, we have been for weeks now. So, you know, we're doing it on our own. It's fine. You know, it's fine. But we are now starting to get to the stage where it's roots. We've got straggly ends. Uh, the hairdresser's looking like they can now open on the 4th of July. How desperate are you to get to a hairdresser? Or, or do you always do it well, yourself? Well, no, this is the awful thing. Apart from my phone ringing, which is probably a hairdresser saying, <laughs> please send that awful woman to us and we can make this <laughs> I can't turn this phone off because my husband's suddenly not here and I don't know what to do. Um, so just leave it, just leave it. I do it that I've always done my own hair. It's partly meanness wow. and it's partly because um, I kind of can do it. I was a model in the 60s and we had to do our own hair then. We had to sort it, do it, put it on wigs, cut it, change it, dye it. So I got used to doing my own hair and I just go down to, you know, the supermarket and buy stuff off the yeah. shelf and stick it on. Because I always think that when I'm watching your, your travel documentaries, you always look so elegant. And, you know, I've done a lot of, of kind of shows where I've been abroad and filming in the heat. And I just always look and think, how on earth does she keep her hair looking so amazing? Well, my hair, my hair is like something that you take out of a Hoover bag, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I practically never wash it. I mean, it's been dyed for so long and so much. And it's been in such extremes of temperature that I didn't think it's really hair at all. It's like a kind of clamp sitting there. <laughs> so I didn't need to wash it a lot of times. But I, I, um, the camera is, strangely enough, Ruth, very forgiving because it doesn't yeah. see dirty clothes and it doesn't see dirty hair. And it can, you, know, you can get away with quite a lot on camera, and I don't know why. And even though I'm literally dropping with sweat, sometimes the camera doesn't even show that. And I have to say, oh, it's so hot here. And I can see people thinking, it doesn't look hot to me. And it, <laughs> sweltering and how often then do you wash your hair can you get away with not washing it for a while is it that oh yeah I mean, I, I, in ordinary life i don't wash it for a week and sometimes in this i find i don't wash it for a fortnight but that's because i mean if it did need washing i would wash it but when you, i don't know you just you can tell with your own things yeah. when when you need to wash them or not and i think hair sometimes we may wash it a bit too often yeah and that makes it greasier more often and then it's a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy you have to keep on and on and on just, so leave it if you can go greasy and oily and then just wash cold. it off. Uh, um, I want to talk, we're not here just to talk about your hair, obviously, which is so lovely. Um, the Lockdown Theatre Group, you've, you've got involved with the Lockdown Theatre Group because you're trying to raise money, obviously, uh, theatre entertainment in, in, you know, very, very worrying times because nobody it's knows when the theatres will be open again. It is so much the rock bottom, I can't tell you, because practically everybody in our professions, and that goes not only for actors, but musicians and dancers and chorus people and people who work in theatres, are kind of freelancers. Mm. And if you're not employed, you're just not employed. Mm. Some of us don't register to get onto the sort of unemployment thing. Um, we haven't a chance of looking into the future because I'm in the middle of actually shooting um, a show called um, uh, Finding Alice with the gorgeous Keely Hawes. And we stopped after three episodes when the lockdown came. We've got three more episodes to shoot. Goodness knows when we'll shoot them. And everything's sort of racking forward in the future. Theatres don't look as though they're going to open until next yeah. year. Yeah. And will they ever be the same if we're not allowed all to be jostled in and crowds and shouting and clapping or sitting in dead silence? Part of entertainment, and I would think that goes for football matches as well, and any kind of entertainment sport or you know, groups or crowds or pubs, everything depends on human beings crushed together. That's how we love it. Mm. You know, we're pack animals and it's so odd. To so think you're, you're just... doing um, a bit of waiting for Godot. So this is on Zoom. So explain to yeah. people what you're doing and how it can help but and how they can it's see it. Sunday, it's on Sunday evening. You have to buy your ticket. And then it's a live Zoom performance with Michael Palin, Robert Lindsay and me being the narrator. And he's reading sort of stage instructions mm -hmm. from bits of waiting for Godot. It's terribly funny and charming. It'll, it only lasts about 28 minutes. 
And then at the end, we've got a QA, and a and it's all for the Royal Theatrical Fund. It's really to help people who are going to be out of work for goodness knows how long and whose futures look really, really shaky. So while the rest of us are all going, yay, back to normality, it won't be the same for, for actors and theatre people. No, no. Um, I, I have to jump in here and say that I have heard some amazing rumours that Abfab might be coming back or a reunion or please confirm that that's true. Oh, God, I wish they'd tell me. But yeah. I, don't, no, no. I don't think it will be. Um, I don't think Jennifer ever wants to write more Ab Fab, but it never really goes away. The feeling that there, the, these characters still exist somewhere. Um, it would be so nice maybe to do something. We, Jennifer and I are in constant contact, and so we, we, we're kind of half thinking of something, but it won't be Ab Fab the reunion. And also, I don't think we should do it without June Whitfield because she was... Really mm, part yeah. of the great five, the five J's, Jennifer, Julia, June, yeah. Jane, and, you know. Um, but maybe something. I don't know. Never well, say never. Joanna, how would Patsy be dealing with lockdown? <laughs> I don't think she'd notice it, sweetie. As long as someone would just smoke away and sort of gush. <laughs> and also you've got grandchildren, haven't you? Has it been difficult not seeing them? I, no. Well, not only that, but they're grandchildren in Scotland. Oh. which has made it very hard because even though lockdown is easing up here in England and maybe in Wales, in Scotland, we're still not allowed to go up there. So it's been ghastly. But thank goodness for things like this, these extraordinary things where we can sort of meet each other. Um, so that's, that's you have to make do with that. And when I was a child, I didn't see my father for a year and a half when he was a soldier and I was back at school in England. And it is... You just pinch yourself and think, well, this has only been three months, you know, it's okay. We've got to be brave and strong. And I don't mean just my father, I mean a thousand million servicemen across the world who went without their families for a long time. So you've just got to go, never mind, never mind. When we do get back, they might die from the crushing, rib-cracking hugs I give them. Joanna, um, obviously for lockdown, um, and I'm really sorry to bring up the, your age because you are over 70, but obviously there's been so many over 70s who found lockdown really difficult. You are thriving on it by the looks of it. Would you see yourself as a bit of a role model for, for people in that age bracket? Well, it's so difficult. We've got such difficult circumstances and I'm so lucky because in my lockdown, I've been working. I've been yes. doing voiceovers and recordings in studios with masks and things, going there and then sitting alone in a private booth. And also I've been looking through um, my travels because in all those huge adventures I've been doing over the past 10 years, um, we have stories that we haven't been able to fit into the programmes. I've been going through them and they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we've been making um, a series of three programmes which will be coming out in the end of July or in the middle of July, I don't know when they're coming out, very, very soon anyway, which are called Unseen Adventures. And we're working on that, and I've been doing links to them, and that's, so that's been thrilling. So I can't really, even though I'm 74, I feel, I feel 30, 39, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you always look fabulous to us. We love to talk to you. We love to have you on the show. Hopefully one day it'll be back in the studio. Joanna Lumley, thank you so much thank for you. now.